It's on-road day today. Tiny this, cars, not trucks. Tiny, cars. well, that's a kind of a truck. Oh yeah, that's true. It is. I guess we have truck. two trucks, one car. Anyway, on-road day. And uh, why would we do that? Because RC is amazing. That's why. And because uh, we we just like to play RCs. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like to diversify. Yeah. Why not? Uh, I I like to think and and. Well, it's not think. I know that every car works differently or handles differently. That's why I have over 60 of them at home, <laughs> but not one of the same. Yeah. So I always try to buy something different yeah. uh, and not the same so I can actually try how they handle differently. I have an MO3, MO5, MO6, MO4. So uh, they're fun. I got to find an MO2 now. There is such a thing? Yeah. Oh. Huh. I know they have uh, R versions too. You get a MO3 R, yes. MO6 R, with all the fancy upgraded parts and stuff on it. Yeah, the R means race. Okay. So it's more race ready, I guess. Yes, and you can actually adjust the camber. There's more adjustment on the wheels, and it actually comes with bearings when you buy them. Oh, they so, everything should come with bearings. I don't even know why that's an option. Yeah, the Tamiya kit, they all come with uh, bushing, plastic bushings instead no. of bearings. No bushings, sorry. I can't do that. It's got to be bearings. So, what are we talking about today? We got uh, an MO3. This is one of the cars that I, I beat Dana with all the time in the basement series. <laughs> Did I just say that? Yes. <laughs> He's sitting over there, so he's behind the camera. <laughs> no, I don't. He beats me every time. No, no, no. And then uh, this is a very old X-Ray chassis from, on, from actual like on-road racing from way back that was put onto a Lexan uh, F250. Yo, you shortened that. It was an extra cab. That's right. It was an extra cab Lexan body and I shortened it and turned it right, right at the door seam. Turned it into a not extra cab so it fits <laughs> on my x-ray car. And you should see he's got a like a five millimeter <laughs> bolt I think actually holding the body together. Yeah. It's a huge bolt in the front and the back. Yeah, there's a no great... body pins, but you do have bolts. There's a one big bolt. Yeah, that works good actually. And uh, I haven't pulled this car off of the shelf for seven or ten years or something—a really, really long time. So this was the inspiration because Frank came over. We're going to do an on-road video. So hey, and what did you bring today? Uh, I brought the Vitara V100. I picked up this kit just before winter off somebody on uh, Marketplace on Facebook. A V100 is, well, Viterra, Viterra brand doesn't even exist anymore. No, but it's the same thing now with um, uh, Was Losi. it Lossy? Losi. Yeah, they rebranded them all, eh? Losi took over, well, it's the company that bought them over. Yeah, uh, yeah. Viterra line discontinued, but since they had a non-road series and Losi did not, they had oh. all the license, still a lot of molds, still a lot of things. Losi decided to take it on as their line. So all the parts are still available, but through the Losi. So it's different part number now, but every yeah. part, everything still fits. So they are still available. So if you find an older Viterra branded underneath the, the car, so when it's written Viterra. Oh, it actually under, says on the chassis, yeah. yeah. It actually says Viterra. So that's a V100. It's the same one as the, uh, the Losi V100 now. They kept the same name on them. That was so. actually really handy for because these are really good cars. Actually, I've yeah. never heard anybody complain about these. If you do, write them in the comments. But I've never heard anybody complain about a V100. They seem to be like a really good, good budget and good on-road car just for every day running around. And yeah, they're cool. Mm -hmm. So what? What? I mean, this is obviously not a stock vehicle in RC. So what was the inspiration for this whole project? Well, this project, I actually, um, the body was all hacked up. Because oh. the guy wanted to put it on this, but really slam it down. So, so it's a Lexan? It, it is a Lexan body. Oh. And he wanted to, uh, he cut the, the Lexan all the way even past the door. Okay. So the door, the it was cut really far back. So I had to do something. So I figured, okay, what about if I do uh, fender flares? Like flare them Smart. out. So I started looking online what there was. And there's a whole bunch of different ones. But it doesn't really tell you the size of it. Oh, so I'm not going to order something and it doesn't fit and then I'm good with Lexan. So I said, hey, I'm going to try making my own. That's so a really cool idea. I took a piece of Lexan, bended it. First, I took a piece of paper to actually see if I, it fit. Like a cut template? Yes, I cut my template with Smart. a piece of paper and I held it there with some uh, yeah. uh, scotch tape. Yeah. It fit perfectly, transferred it onto Lexan and then I super glued it on and then I used a Tamiya putty. 
There's a couple oh. videos that I put on my YouTube channel that shows how I've quickly done that, but I will make another video uh, uh, of it. But it turned out like wonderful for the fender flares on this. Like you can barely tell where the joint is on this side and even at the back. So it actually looks really good. Yeah. Yeah, that's impressive. And, and I a lot of the drift cars nowadays, you see them with the big fender flares and the tires pushed out and stuff. So like that's a yeah. cool theme. And I like the fact that the kind of the way I did my fender flares also actually brought out the side of the body here a little bit. Yeah. Because of when the tension of those, yeah. uh, the Lexan that, that was when I was gluing it. Actually it just holds it out a little bit. Brought it out instead of bringing it in. So it actually made it look like as if the body actually has a... Um, like a flare a kind flare of... A flare on it also. And then you put, did you add this uh, big bottom uh, scoop thing nope, on it? No, that's the bumper that was on the original car. So oh, really? Everything on the on this was originally there. And it basically, I was going to cut it, but I think I'm going to leave it there. It protects the body. I would, yeah. And uh, it's like a wind scoop. The rear also, the, uh, the diffuser was also there. Oh, yeah. So yeah. Uh, everything was on there, so I just decided to keep it on. Uh, so it actually fits pretty good. Front also. And I actually, it had body posts there, body posts at the I back. I was going to say, where's the clips, man? I don't like body posts. Like <laughs> yes. So I put it on magnets. So basically there's one at the back and two at the front. So oh, that's great. Two at the front there in the front hood and one in the back hood. I'm all about the magnets, man. So that's nice. Good job. It's all there. Shoe good on there. So this chassis is a four wheel drive on road uh, or was it made for drifting? A lot of people use it for drifting uh, and also racing. So this one, I'm, I'm going to use it for drifting. I'm going to keep those tires on. And if I don't want it to drift, I just want to go fast. I'll just change the tires. That's what's nice about those, uh, those cars. So do you have to do anything different to the setup to switch it over to drift or do you just drive differently? You just drive it differently. You just got to learn how to drive it differently because the gyro doesn't really go on a 4x4 drifter. Uh, some people oh. do make it work, but it's some people say no. You don't put a gyro on a four x four. Uh, really? And a lot of people they don't call it drifting. They power. They call it power drifting. Okay, for four wheel drive. For four wheel drive. Interesting. So uh, some people do set up the gyro on them, but a lot of ninety nine percent of the people don't bother about the gyro on uh, onto these cars. I have always liked these cars. The V one hundred. Not, not just because the Viterra had incredibly awesome bodies for them, but the chassis, everything, the layout is so simple and straightforward and they seem to last. You can put brake discs on them and yeah. rotors and stuff because they've got little captures for the brake rotors and discs. And and this, the, the tires, they were silver before. And I actually used a Tamaya yeah. translucent, uh, lucent, uh, translucent color on it. Those are, they look like they're orange lights. chrome, you know? Yeah. And it's actually the uh, yellow one I actually used on that, and it actually turned out orange. It was kind of cool. It's really cool. <laughs> yeah, those are neat. So I didn't have to buy new tires to actually fit with the body that I was doing for yeah. this. So You could still put headlights in that too. It's got clear uh, headlights, eh? Yes, and that's the reason I went with clear. I am going to do some fancy headlights with it. I'm going to use three millimeter. Yeah. Headlights. Yeah. And I'm gonna be putting five or six of them side by side. All in a row, like all in a row, yeah. Yeah, neat. I, I wish I was smarter in, in how to make them like uh do like a sequential, sequential uh, whatever. lighting. You need yeah. some fancy like both electronics. of them would go like this, that would be cool. That would be cool. Right now I'll have them that it's just all on and the side one I'll put it not as bright. But I want to actually put them on the lay them down on a piece of Lexan, glue them on so they stay side by side. Yeah. And after take shugu, uh, not shugu, but hot glue to actually make sure they stay there. And just like, in other words, do a light, light bucket with it. Out of and, the hot glue. Yeah. And once it's yep. done, then I'll put it onto the body here. Yeah. Yeah. And I did stick that, it to the front. When I did the lights on this car here, I did the same thing. I actually made a light socket for it out of hot glue. And then once it was like where I wanted it, I just hot glued the whole thing right onto the lights. Oh yeah. <laughs> it works good. And and because this has so much plastic in the front here and my body is going to be in the back, yeah. I'm going to drill some three millimeter holes here every maybe inch. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to put a three millimeter light pointing down. Like underglow. Yeah. Like that is going to make it's it an cool. underglow. And That's on cool. the side of the chassis also, I'll be hot gluing some lights. Put a strip of... LEDs or whatever? Yeah, but this thing is so low to the ground, you can't put a strip of LED. 
Well, not unless under, I put maybe. it on the side, yeah. Yeah, unless you put, put them out like facing down, maybe. But yeah, but that's why I was thinking I'm just going to use the um, a small one, a small LED to put on the side. Yeah, and yeah. And I'd glue it to the side of the body. Yeah. And it's just going to be a, a nice glow coming off to the side, and I'll do the same thing at the back where the wind diffuser is. So it, I got still a little work to do on this, but it's, this is a fun little project that I just think These around. are never done though. Yeah, you just add you, to them. Yeah, so you work cool. on them forever. Uh, I did some stacks. Those are done with styrene also at the back. Cool. So, and this is a piece <laughs> of Lexan to cover the back box, which all easy stuff that were done. I used a 3D printer to print these in the front. So it's cool. And it's that easy to put the body back on. Yeah, that's cheating. And it's all centered and everything with those magnets. Yeah, so neat project. I understand why you don't have two of the same car now because you're customizing everything that you build basically, and so there's something fresh on every yeah. one of them, right? Yep. Yeah. Like you could have two V100s and never know. True, <laughs> and then then I could set it up differently also. Yeah. It's just like my 34 Ford. It's supposed it's a it's a Tamiya TT01. Yeah. But I've modified it, I've even stretched it, yeah. and I've taken off the front wheel drive, so now it's just a rear wheel drive, because in 34 Ford it only came in rear wheel. Yeah. So uh, that one is a drifter of mine, rear wheel drifter, just for the fun of it. It's a cool hot rod. There's yeah. a video for that on the channel in the description box as well. Frank and I have done a whole bunch of videos, so there's, I should have like a tank, Frank the Tank playlist or something. <laughs> so, yeah, we've done scale talk videos yeah. and like all kinds of stuff, and trails and just everything. It's great. But uh, these little cars are fun in the basement series, like the, yeah. even the, the small short wheel base, yeah. they're fun in the, uh, yeah. I, I usually take a walk with my wife and my son and we just, I take an RC with them. With just them tear and, it up down the road. Yeah, we just take a walk and walk around. And that's uh, another thing that I've done is this one, which is a Mad Max kind of look. That's really cool. And Let's talk we'll, about that. We'll talk about that in another video. You can yeah. put the link yeah. on Here. that. So Front and center front and center <laughs> I mean really that's so cool all right well that's on road day today and uh, of course it's still winter here when we're filming yeah. right now so we got to wait to get outside before we can do some actual like lots of ice right now out there pavement stuff yeah it's not quite time but soon so for now here we have a great video about on road cars and thanks so much for coming up thank you thanks guys for watching if you have comments and questions if you have your own on road cars put the links in the comment box because we read all the comments and we want to see what you guys are into so thanks again for watching and tuning in we'll see you on the next one see you later